all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so yesterday we talked about a study that showed the importance of the b cells and the antibodies today i'm going to talk about something very interesting it, it is something that i had been looking for as well and that is many times cool beans send me a message that hey somebody in my home became covid positive but i never got any symptoms and i tested negative as well and how is that interestingly in my own home when we got covid some people actually still have antibody negative so that's very interesting so the study that I'll, i'll share today and go over it's a beautiful study what that shows is the summary of the study is this researchers found out or they researched that the blood collected from the household contacts meaning the people who were taking care of someone who was covid positive these household contacts never tested positive do not have antibodies either but they have t cells that are positive to sars cov 2 and then of course the researchers thought that maybe this is just in every case maybe these patients were these household attendees were positive because of some human coronavirus uh, exposure some common cold exposure so they then compared them to healthy donors who had some human coronavirus infections and they found out that the human coronavirus infections or healthy donors did not have similar t cell uh panels so that's a beautiful uh, study it's a small study it's a very interesting study this does not mean that t cell is the end all and be all this also does not mean that the antibodies are end all and be all there is a combination of these things that work together so let's look at this it's really fascinating so i'm going to share my screen so first let's look at the references this is drbean.com This is the study. The study says exposure to SARS-CoV-2 generates T cell memory in the absence of a detectable viral infection. This was for the household members. They did not they never tested positive on PCR or on antibodies and they still had T cells. Beautiful study. And then um on the flip side I did a study yesterday. Here is one more study. recovery from acute sars cov 2 infection and development of an an amnestic immune responses in t cell depleted rhesus macaques so these are the monkeys who do not have t cells and they only were able to produce antibodies that is let's say they had a primary infection they learned how to combat with it they made the memory cells then the t cells were depleted in them and they were still able to clear the virus so there are both kinds of studies and if you would go and look around there are researchers who are just battling with each other one says that hey antibody only works the other one says t cells work as well i think they both work and they both have a place so let's look at the study I'm going to bring up my today is drawing day <laughs> so let's go with that so here is a t cell this t cell is a memory t cell so if you see here this t cell is holding on to a virus let me just to a virus and this t cell is a memory t cell so the question is how can a t cell become generated even when there is no exposure so we're going to look at that study today so here is what they did in this study the researchers took blood samples from patients i think about 90 of them and those blood samples they used them to culture the t and b cells from those samples especially the t cell now remember that t cells are cd4 positive which are helper t cell 
and CD8 positive, which are cytotoxic T cell, helper T cells function is to route the adaptive arm towards humoral response or the cytotoxic response or antibody response and the cellular response. And the cytotoxic T cell or CD8 positive T cells or killer T cell, their job is to actually kill the cells or the pathogens the cells that are infected or that are cancerous, the the cytotoxic T cell kills them. Natural killer cells kill them as well. So here, there are some patients whose blood was taken, and researchers found that these patients had memory T cells, and it is actually it makes sense they should have memory T cells. However, researchers found that the household members who did not test positive on antibody or on PCR, they also had memory T cell pools and very comparable, although lesser than the patient, but still effective pools. Pool of cells, memory cells, memory banks of the cells. And they, the, these household members never tested positive. So that question that, hey, I did not test positive, somebody in my home had it, do I have some protection now? Did I get some memory developed? The answer is, at least in this study, yes. So 90 COVID patients, 69 closed contacts, and I think about 45 families is where they did this study. Now, just for a review, what happens is, let's start from here, the left side of the diagram. This is innate arm. The cool beans who've been here for the whole one and a half year, they know this diagram very well, just to review and be on the same page. There is innate arm. Innate arm is the first responder. So as a pathogen enters in our body, the very first exposure, the pathogen is taken up by the innate arm, that may be macrophages, dendritic cells, neutrophils, natural killer cells, there are many other, but dendritic and macrophages are more important. They will eat up the pathogen, break it down into smaller pieces, then they would expose those pieces outside, then the, this part is adaptive arm. It takes a few days to become activated. For its activation, we know that there is naive T cell, Naive T cell will come in contact with the antigen presenting cell or APC. This is a professional APC, macrophage, dendritic cell, and B cells. Although B cells do not present to antigen uh, to naive T cells, it is just the macrophage and dendritic cell that present to naive T cell. Now, this naive T cell will go the helper 2 pathway or humoral pathway, which will end with B cells becoming plasma cells or active B cell and generate antibodies. We talked about them yesterday. Today, this discussion, that these naive T cell in the presence of interleukin 12 can become T helper one. These T helper one will then release interleukin two and activate the cytotoxic T cell. These cytotoxic T cell or CD8 positive T cell are going to clear out the virus infected cells. So today's discussion is that these cells, these cells, CD4, these helper cells are called CD4 positive. These cytotoxic cells are called CD8 positive. Today's research is that these cells were present in the household contacts. They were, of course, present in the patient, but they were present in the household contact as well. And now we also know that when this system works, whenever there is an active B cell, there will be memory cells that will be produced as well. And similarly, whenever there are active T cells, either T helper or cytotoxic or both, there will be production of the memory cells from there as well. Good. So for the remaining part of the discussion, please just keep this part in your mind. This is the discussion point. And Keep one more thing in your mind, and that is we are talking about memory cells generated from T helper and cytotoxic in patients for sure, but also the household contacts.
So we know that from that mechanism that we just saw, there will be, <laughs> so I'm laughing because I didn't make the eye, eyes of pupils. So there will be memory B cells. See, it says B over here. So there are going to be memory B cells. What does that mean? That means in the future with the second exposure, the B cells or T cells that are memory cells, they will become active. Sorry, I keep uh, displaying the previous diagram. So my apologies. Memory B cells and memory T cell, they are present. Now, please realize an important thing. I think you, are, you already know this, but I'm going to just very quickly present this. The first time when the exposure occurs, the first time when the infection occurs, the first time when the vaccine occurs, whatever it is, the first exposure, then the immune system has to go through this whole process of having the innate arm work, present the antigen to the adaptive arm, then the helper cells will have to become activated. They will then decide that do we go humoral pathway or the cytotoxic pathway. These end cells, B cells or the cytotoxic T cells, they are the effector cells of the adaptive arm. They are the ones that will actually function, but to reach them, to ask them to help you, you have to go through this whole process. This is the first time, but once the memory cells have been produced, then the next exposure does not need that whole structure to become active. Instead, the pathogen can directly now connect with these memory cells and these cells would start working. They would start expanding. Expanding means they'll make copies of themselves. That is called expansion or proliferation. They would also differentiate. They'll become a little more uh, refined, especially B cells do the differentiation. T cells do less differentiation. So take away from this diagram is just this much that there are memory cells that are developed. So these little tiny things, the, this is the pool of memory cells. So you would hear immunologists talk about this in, in the ways by saying the frequency of the B cell, memory B cells will increase. The frequency of the memory T cell would increase or the pool size of the memory C B cells would increase, or the pool size of the memory T cell would increase. That all simply means the same thing, and that is that there will be more and more cells that will be produced with each exposure. Good? So this is just a quick recap. Now, what these researchers did, Remember, they had the blood samples from the 90 patients and I think 59 household members. They took their blood samples. They went in vitro. They put those samples. So let's say these are the peripheral blood mononuclear cells or dendritic cells and the, uh, what is that, B cells and T cells. They have put them over here. Then they also added antigens or they added little lipids that would act like SARS-CoV-2's spike protein or N protein or other components. So you can think of this that imagine if I was a patient of COVID from 48 days after the infection to 86 days after the infection, they take my blood, they're expecting to see the memory cells circulating in the blood Remember, memory cells will be sitting at the site of infection in the local lymph nodes, circulating in the blood, and sometimes they would also go and live in the bone marrow too. So this is the cells that are circulating in the blood 48 to 86 days after. They have taken those, those cells, and now they are agitating those cells, irritating them or stimulating them or triggering them with the SARS-CoV-2 antibodies. The result is these cells, they start expanding. They start increasing in number. They start dividing. 
this is a normal natural behavior of a memory cell. The point of a memory cell is what? Our body does not want to keep active cells all the time. Imagine if from our childhood, every infection caused active cells and those active cells are always active and there are more active cells after the next infection and so on, we'll just become a big hunk of cells, which are immune cells. So our body doesn't do that. It kills the cells that became active to take care of an infection. It just keeps some samples of them as memory cell for future use. So when the future use occurs, that is that these memory cells are exposed to the same antigen again, then they start making copies of themselves. This is called expansion. And they are getting ready for fight. They'll make, so they just keep a mom and a <laughs> dad cell who would then make more baby cells that would do this the fight. So they did the in vitro stimulation 48 to 86 days after and they saw the expansion. Very interesting. So for patients that is fine but they actually saw the similar expansion in the um, in the patient's household household contacts as well. So I think I have left one piece out. So give me one second. Okay, so my... I think I've lost my one of my layers. So anyways, when this expansion occurred, what they saw was that 94% of the patients had, 94% of the patients had CD4 positive memory cell expansion. And it is expected. Patient would develop expansion. Similarly, I think about 87% had CD8 cell expansion from their memory cells. And more than 59% of the healthy household contacts testing negative had the expansion of the T and uh, helper T cell and cytotoxic T cell. More than 60%. Now, the question is, if so many healthy household contacts were becoming positive with the T cells, then maybe that is a fluke. Maybe everyone is that way. So then what the, what these, um, what these researchers did was they took healthy individuals, their cells, they treated them in the same way. These individuals were possibly in the past exposed to human coronavirus and only 3.17% out of them developed anti-SARS-CoV-2 T cells or had anti-SARS-CoV-2 T cells. So what they proved by this is that in a normal healthy population that has tested negative, if they were not exposed to SARS-CoV-2, they would only show 3.17% will show cross-reaction to SARS-CoV-2. But if they were exposed, even when they had tested negative, 60% and more would show positive T cells. That is, the, that is the fun part of this. So then they say in the study, they say that exposure to SARS-CoV-2 can facilitate exposure to SARS-CoV-2, not infection by SARS-CoV-2 or active infection or symptomatic infection. And this is an infection that is so subtle. This is an exposure that is so subtle that the patient's household contact, who they are talking about, did never become positive on PCR or on antibody. But they had the T memory established. Can you imagine? B cells are not established. Memory cells are not there for the B cells, but memory cells for T cells are there. Look at this, but also in some close contacts, even in the absence of successful infection. 
beautiful. And they say, in contrast, in the case of healthy donors, we found that only 3.33 and 6.67 of the samples contained cross-reactive memory CD4 or CD8. So they said if you take healthy individuals that were not exposed to SARS-CoV-2 patients and hence mildly exposed to SARS-CoV-2, they actually had not much of a cross-reactivity. So that's interesting. There was one more thing, these green molecules. Researchers had one more thought and that was, fine, we have T cells, memory T cells, memory CD4 positive T cells, memory CD8 positive T cells. Will they actually become active enough to even produce interferons? So they stimulated them and they measured the secretions by these cells to see if these cells were producing interferons. And they found out that these memory T cells and memory CD8 cells, when they became active after agitating with the antigen, they started producing interferons as well. And healthy donors did not produce interferons like this. And they did a further test to make sure that these cells were actually able to produce interferons. They treated all cells, healthy donor cell, this household contact and the patient cell with the cytomegalovirus, which most of us are exposed to. And they saw that all the cells across the board produced interferons, which proved that the cell was capable of producing interferon. But when they exposed them to the SARS-CoV-2 antigen, only patient and household members produced interferons and not other non-exposed individuals. The summary of all of this is, if somebody has this question that someone in my household was sick, I never became sick, do I have any protection? At least from this study's point of view, there may be T cells present and present with the enough robustness that if an exposure appears later, that person will be able to have some defense. So that's, I was fascinating, fascinated by this. So then they say memory T cell immunity, memory T cell immunity is detectable in both symptomatic and asymptomatic patients. So they found this out as well. Remember, there was a study very early on, about a year ago, we discussed it, that in some patients who were asymptomatic, their memory, their T cells were more active, the cytotoxic T cell. CD4 cells would become active in all cases, humoral response or cytotoxic response. Helper T cell have to become active because they allow, they do the routing, but cytotoxic T cell, not necessarily have to be active in all cases. And they saw that in asymptomatic patients, cytotoxic T cell were very active as well. So here, these researchers found this as well. They found that memory T cell immunity is detectable in both symptomatic and asymptomatic patients with COVID-19 infection. That's very interesting. Then they said, there was no significant difference in the size of SARS-CoV-2 specific memory T cell pool between the symptomatic and asymptomatic COVID-19 patients. So that was an interesting observation as well, that the patient, symptomatic or asymptomatic, had similar sizes of T cell pools. So then if we sum up this discussion, patient, household contact, or someone with such low exposure that they don't even become positive on PCR or antibodies positive. Antibody negative means that their B cells never started making enough antibodies that are detectable. 
the symptomatic or asymptomatic can develop memory T cells, both memory helper T cells and memory cytotoxic T cells. And those T cells actually respond very well as well when they're exposed to the infection. Or in this case, they were exposed to the antigens or infection-like antigens. So that is a discussion. I really enjoyed this uh, study. Of course, yesterday we talked about antibodies. So there are all kinds of studies. There are studies that show that antibody is more important and potent. And there are studies that show here T cells are very important as well. And in some patients where memory cell B cells have not become active, the T cells are becoming active and helping. So all kinds of studies are out there. So um, hopefully we can stay balanced about it instead of taking part in that, <laughs> that battle that is going on outside that says one type or the other type is more important. So Gold Country says, is this herd immunity finally? So very, very good question. And there are, I'm going to give multiple answers. If you ask those scientists that say that B cell is more important and B cells response, antibody response is more important and T cell response is not as important. According to them, we have not reached the anti uh, antibody status and we have not reached the herd immunity. They also point out that T cells robustness or response is not true in all cases. And this is true. It's not necessary that T cell, cytotoxic T cell, will become dominant and prominent in all patients. And number three, they point out that when, for example, Omicron has escaped the antibodies, and we say, all right, and uh, Big Pharma says that as well, that, well, the T cells are still there. They can still be helpful. So we would still have protection. And that protection is, let's say, 70, 80% efficacy. Then there are scientists that also say that, well, that is not herd immunity. How can you have 80% efficacy and develop 100% protection? And so they even say this would not become even endemic. This is just going to stay prevalent. However, these are mechanisms. These are studies. We should look at the bigger picture as well. In the bigger picture, we are fortunate that at least it seems like, and our data might change later on, and we might come back here and saying instead of fortunate, we were unfortunate. We'll see. So far, the data says that Omicron has been a little less damaging to us humans. And so I think we are fortunate that even if the spikes are there and the huge peaks are occurring, and I wish that people protect themselves because hospitals can be jam-packed. But it seems like we are reaching a point of, if not herd immunity, then a point of an endemic state or a state of just low level of the infection in the society. But the battle is continuing. And I wanted to do something different instead of taking a side and say, it is this way or that. I just wanted to present both kind of studies for us to see that bigger picture is actually making sense that we are slowly getting out of it. Gift24 says the hospitals are jammed to the moon. Yeah, so my request uh, is that please be careful. Please take care of yourself. At the same time, who am I to say it? Because I got myself infected as well somehow. So just do whatever you can, please. M. Ganesh says, thank you for your efforts in teaching deciphering research jargon studies. Extraordinary, excellent teaching. Joy to hear you. Thank you very much. So with this, I'm going to stop with this discussion. Please like, subscribe, and share. And if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. You can buy me a coffee or you can use PayPal or you can be a patron. Thank you very much and I'll see you shortly again. Bye.